Hi everyone, this is Stan Mallow, the Paranormal Yacker, and now I am going to speak with Joyce Bonds, an internationally acclaimed spiritist who is all part of what we're going to be doing over here to see about the spirit, the being that's around here. Number one, Joyce, I mean, I know you for many years. I know. And I know your talents and how great you are. <laughs> Thank uh, you. With, oh, I, I know that. that, that's a given. But for those out there who don't know what a spiritist is, what is a spiritist, what? and how does it different say from a medium or a psychic? No, uh, I refer myself as a spiritist because I hate the word psychic. Okay, that's a, that's a good reason. <laughs> okay, because it, it's been so misused and everything. Okay. And, and spiritist, it's not spiritualist. A spiritist is someone who believes in spirits, mm -hmm. uh, believe in God, if, if I can say that, or, or the universe, that, or whatever. Yes. And mm -hmm. we believe that we've been sent here to help humanity and learn, and mm -hmm. then when we have learned our lesson, we go back, and then we come back again. Basically, I believe in, in, in spirits, I work with spirits, uh, I work, I believe in angels, I, I believe in all of this, so there you go. And reincarnation. Of course. Is what you said. De de definitely. Okay, that's Definitely, cool. yeah. Now, again, uh, you were the catalyst for me bringing me into the Yacht Club over here. I know, which I it's thank beautiful. you for, it's great there. Now, the vibes that you picked up, since you've been here a while, you've been a member for a while. Yeah, well, I got, here, I got I, bad news for you ladies over there. There's a lot more than one. Okay. <laughs> and a lot of them are outside. Just let you know. Okay. You see, uh, everybody, uh, in, in, uh, I'm talking for myself the way I work. Mm -hmm. When I know I'm going to do something, it, it always starts a few days before. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, all of my way here, I had a terrible headache that I don't usually have headaches. So I know, as an example, that that they were right when they said that this man, they call him Charlie, by the way, we're going to call him Charlie, this man was drinking, uh, because I, I, I could feel him always like, I didn't know if he was really drinking or if he was really sick, but he was always falling and always, you know, he looks like I'm not steady on my, on my feet kind of thing, and he kept falling. So uh, I, I, I would assume that uh, he, he either fell down the stairs or fell some, somewhere, hurt his head, because my head was really hurting. And I also saw uh, like a body floating along the water. So they were absolutely right about their... their but no one did yet. Yeah, about no. what they were saying. Another thing also that I did pick up, by the way, he always stands up there. See, uh, right up there? So when you go up there, he's at the corner there. Okay. I, I saw him a few times when I come here for a drink or something, you know. <laughs> he stands there. So maybe when they were talking about the coughing, maybe that's what it was too, or it came from there. Anyway, so he likes it over there. And even when I was here for one reception, I think it was the Commodore reception that I was here, and I was sitting there, and he was standing there looking at this, and he was really happy to see what everything was going on. You know? Okay, I find that interesting. Uh, so, also when big events were going on. Oh yeah, he, he's very quiet. He's okay, very so quiet. And Norma, and oh yeah, he, end, it was just them and maybe one other person there. Yeah. But you saw him. Oh yeah, he stands there and he watches. So he looks down. He, he, he looks down and he, okay. he, he's enjoying all of that. Yeah. Now. I don't know the history of this area, uh, but another thing that I did pick up is that there's a lot of Aboriginal and, and Native Indians, mm -hmm. okay? So I was trying to, because I don't know too many uh, tribes, <laughs> you know, so, and, and I was trying to figure out with their costume and what they were, and what I got was Hurons. Okay. So, uh, and, and, but they didn't live here. So, uh, the reason I'm saying that is because there's, a, there's, there's one in particular that got killed here. And they were on their way somewhere. So, I don't know, you know, I would have to, 
asked Research them, and, whatever, and yeah. you, you know, I, they were on their way somewhere. They were not staying here. They, they're not from here. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where they come from, but they're not from here. But they were on their way somewhere, and and this beautiful guy, beautiful native, uh, somehow got killed by somebody. So I don't know if it was because it it. it uh, let me see if I can get a date. Uh, uh, 16, 1642, maybe 1640. I'll have to research this. But, um, this is what I get in the 1640, 1650. And so I don't know if they were at war with other tribe or, or maybe soldiers. I, I, you know, he got, he got killed. He got killed here. He's here. Yeah. And he's here. Okay. Oh. So. He, he really likes it here for some strange reason, you, you know, because, I mean, ghosts really, uh, it's because they're stuck here. But they shouldn't be here, they should go home. But, <laughs> they choose you know, they, they, they choose to stay either because uh, it was an accident that they die or because whatever reason they, they choose not to go, not to go home. So he chose to stay here, you know. And one of the reasons why he chose to stay here is because what I get from him and that is mostly uh, a healer. Uh, you know, they, they have maybe uh, whatever they call them, like a shaman or something, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he was and and is really protective of. Of the animals and the trees and and everything, you know, and you he, he, he's looking after all of this, you know, and and earlier, by the way, I don't know if anybody heard or saw, but there was something fell from there outside. I'm saying, okay, I'll, I'll, I won't forget you. <laughs> anyway, so they're here, you know. So there's a lot. There's more than that, but there's a lot of people out there. That we're never alone. You know, and, mm -hmm. and the most important thing that, that I would like to uh, say to people is do not be afraid, mm -hmm. you know, because we're never alone, ever. And if you're afraid or if you don't feel, I, I don't want to see you today, just tell them. And then they go. 95% of the, I should say 98% of the time, they will not stay. They will go. Mm -hmm. They would listen to us. Okay. So Charlie, when he comes at night and look at everything, is very quiet. He doesn't want to disturb the peace of everything. <laughs> so you know, and and like Betty Ann says, I'm afraid to go to the office, or I'm afraid to go to the washroom. I'm afraid, you know, just say, hey, stay here. I'm going, <laughs> and, and then they will go. They, they obey. You know, very seldom they won't. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, out of curiosity, since you say you saw different spirits, you had the native, the Aboriginal yeah. there, you have Charlie up there on that. Do they ever intermingle with each other, or do they keep to their own space or territory? No, they, to me, they seem to be, take, is here and they're there. Okay. You know, I didn't see, uh, I don't know how to call him, my, my shaman, I should say. I mm -hmm. didn't see him in, I just see him outside. He's always out there. He's not in. He's in. Always in? Yeah, he's in. Okay, so, so something from outside that had to be the Aboriginal then. Yeah. There was a noise. So, okay. yeah, oh yeah, that was, that was not Charlie. <laughs> that was he yeah, just my calls. showman. Yeah, my showman is out there and Charlie is up here. Yeah. And um, in this room over there, other, you said also outside too. Front and back, all around the place, you feel them? Well, I, I, I think if we, maybe in the summer, in the summer, you can come back with your little machine <laughs> and see what's out there. Because there's a lot of, of energy out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. I'm know? waiting since I've got this invitation on you. I know. I'm going to take advantage of it, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. But well, i got to tell you again what, it, what I told the very yeah. end. And to Norma, the camaraderie, the, all the energy over here is so great. I know, it's wonderful. It, nice people, nice place, 
good food, you know, and and just to think that I'm 15 minutes away from my home, and it's like I'm in the middle You're in a lot of, of Toronto. Toronto. Exactly. I'm in the downtown Toronto. You would see some people travel hours to what they call I know. cottage country. I know. That's what you call it, right? Cottage country. Absolutely. So when yeah. I found this, I said, oh my God, there's a God, thank you. I mean, you know. And you were able to get a space, so. I, yeah, and I got the space. Yes. Cool. And then I got the boat. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah. So, oh, and can I, can I say something about the woman with the wine glass? Remember yes. They, uh, well, I remember. Remember they said that there was a woman uh, somewhere, I don't know where, you know, uh, with a wine glass. Yeah, no, but so yeah, yeah, she comes from on the other side of the river, from a house from the other side of the river. She doesn't come from here. She just comes in. She visit. was crashing the place. Yeah, <laughs> she comes and check out what's going on here. But okay, she, she belongs. Good taste. That's she, good. she belongs on the other side of the river in one of those houses over there. Mm -hmm. And and um, I mean, I don't. You know, we we don't know the people on the other side, but this woman died of a stroke. Mm -hmm. You know, and and she was not very old when she died. Interesting. Way the other side, because I look out over here, I don't see a building. I only I, see. No I know, but trees. because there's trees. But, back, yeah. but if you if you have oh, a yeah. look now that the leaves are gone because the winter is coming, mm -hmm. you're gonna see some lights at night. You see the houses on the other side. And she's one of, she comes from there, yeah, and that's her. Okay, that, that's great, and I, I thank you so it, much, Joyce, my for this. Without further ado, Norma, welcome to Paranormal Yacker. Thank you. Now, I gotta say, I feel I lucked out when on your Thanksgiving, and I gotta compliment the Yacht Club on this Thanksgiving dinner that you did, and I'm so happy to be friends with Dale and Joyce Bonds, who were kind enough to invite me there with the other hospitality and just chit chatting with you. I found out about the wonderful paranormal activity going on here, so I would appreciate you sharing with me and with our audience what it is that you heard, seen, or experienced related to paranormal activity at the Yacht Club here? Well, um, there was one evening um, I was here at the, uh, the club and situated at the bar and there was only my sister and the bartender that was here that night and the bartender happened to be in the kitchen and my sister and I were sitting at the bar stools and um, all of a sudden there was a cough and my sister said did you hear that and then the cough came again and I said yes so I believe there was two coughs that we heard there was no one else in the club other than the three of us and it definitely wasn't the bartender because we had asked her and uh, if she had coughed and she said you have to know her. her she'd say, no, darling, mm -hmm. it's the ghost. Oh, so she knew about it. Well, she's been here for over 30 years, so yes, mm -hmm. she's experienced. Were you aware that there was a ghost here before? Uh, before that time? Well, we've heard stories, mm -hmm. and, um, and since, like, we've heard some real stories that have happened here at the club. Would you like to share some of them? That would be great. Sure. Um, Thank you. There was a gentleman here who used to be the Commodore, um, closed up the bar one night and there's a safe in the floor just outside the kitchen and he went to put the money from the bar in the envelope and put it into the safe and all of a sudden he heard a whistling and he said he looked around and he was the only one here that he thought. Mm -hmm. He shouted out, who's there? And nobody responded. He got kind of nervous. He locked up the safe, went out the front door, locked it up, and he was the only vehicle that was here at the club. There was another time from one of our members who is no longer with us, um, used to come here on a Saturday afternoon and would sit here and um, smoke his cigar. And he went into the kitchen one that morning 
and he heard, hey, Kenny, how are you? And the other gentleman that was with him also heard it. Hmm. And that was when um, the gentleman had gone into the kitchen area down by the back stairs, and that's where he heard, hi, Kenny, how are you? And so this has happened apparently a couple of times where this gentleman, Kenny, has heard voices and relating to him, like his name. Mm -hmm. Now, when did this uh, occur? Because it's on a few levels here. It was on the upstairs level that it happened? No, it happened know? here on this level here. Okay, because I remember speaking with you, you mentioned something about activity upstairs. So people have experienced things upstairs too? Um, that I'm not aware of. We were just always afraid to go upstairs. Okay, okay that's okay. Okay. Because we didn't know where the sounds and, and the stuff was coming from. So we've assumed it was upstairs only because there were people, a couple that used to live here in the clubhouse. But they had year round. They, there? they lived here, and hmm. the gentleman was the bar was the bartender, and the lady, the wife used to look after the cleaning of the club, um, but they had since moved out, so mm -hmm. it's not like they had passed away here and then moved. They had gone. Mm -hmm. And what's upstairs, or what was upstairs? It was a problem. It there. was an what's apartment. What's there now? Yeah. yeah. But what's there now? Well, right now we just have um, an office, and we have a meeting room, we have a games room, we have a washroom wow. on the second floor. It's a built a resort over here in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, for Absolutely sure. incredible. With that, now you yourself, what were your feelings when you firsthand heard that coughing and you figured something was going on over there? Was there fear or just curiosity or what was your reaction? Well, first of all, I guess it was curiosity. Who was it? There was nobody in here um, but the three of us. And then it was because we had heard other stories of what took place here, we thought maybe this was the ghost mm -hmm. that was here in the But club. there was nothing foreboding, or did you feel bad or scary or anything, or just... Well, yes, I think we, we felt a little scared. We were frightened that something had taken place, and uh, like, where did it come from? Were you ever curious or just asked when you were here to ask the spirit of whoever is here to make themselves known to you, or you left them alone? <laughs> no, we left it alone. Um, well, we wouldn't, no, we've never said anything or, um, I mean, we may have said, who are you, where are you, and who is this, but mm -hmm. just... Did they appear with, with this person or persons, since we don't know, appear uh, when there was an event going on here or when there was no event, when it was quiet or what well, was it like? Well, there was, um, well, I, I can just um, remember one other incident that took place was there was an event that was going to happen the following day and the bartender had her nep or her grandson here to help her for the next day and he was at the bar and his grandmother was in the kitchen and he looked out the window, the front window, and saw this white, I don't know if it was like a figure of a lady dressed in white holding a glass of wine. And he immediately said to his grandmother in Polish um, what he saw. And so that was an, another sort of spirit that mm -hmm. had taken place. But time frame wise, was it always from the beginning or were these stories of spirit activity at the Yacht Club? Is it a period of years or did it start at some point in time? Well, I think it goes back to 30 years. Oh, okay. When the couple used to live upstairs and then they rehired um, a bartender and it happened after that bartender had Right. Well, I mean, I can tell the story, but mm -hmm. that I know, that I've heard, I mean, yeah. 
Um, I don't know if you want to know. Yes, I want to know. Okay. I know the paranormal Yakka audience wants to know. Oh, yes. okay. Well, um, when the couple had moved out, um, apparently they hired somebody. They needed a bartender. And they had hired somebody to come in who, I guess, worked at a legion. And he had come in and he was the bartender. And little did they know that this bartender couldn't get other jobs because he drank a lot. But they didn't know at the time of hiring him. Mm. And, it took, and, and then at one night, um, he left the bar, closed the bar. From what I understand, he had taken some alcohol from the bar, went out to our gas dock, and fell asleep, and fell off the gas dock, and floated down the river. Wow. Past boats. And I believe there were members who are now have passed on that we couldn't really verify all that. But um, from what I understand, that's one of the members did say that he did fall off the gas dock and floated down the river. So there could be a possibility it might be him in addition to somebody else, do you think? Well, I... You don't know? I don't know. I don't know. But that's, that's a distinct possibility. Well, it, yeah, right it sounds like, Of course, yeah. a lot of people, you know, come back to where initially something happened mm. with them on that. That mm. is absolutely fascinating. Yes. And uh, have you yourself, uh, you said you, you were here with your sister? Yes. With your sister. And did she have other experiences too? Or that was it with the coffee? I mean, that would be a lot, even one experience. Mm -hmm. Um Sorry, what was the question again? Like, sure, uh, with, with your sister, uh, the experience of that, did it happen ever with the spirit appearing when she was by herself or was it with only that time with you? I believe it was only with me, mm -hmm. but I can't say for sure. Okay, the only reason why, why, why I'm saying that, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna also ask it to the other guest also, on that is, because we don't know, we're dealing with the unknown, because a lot of times, whatever the reason is, uh, those in the spirit world will attach themselves to somebody and come over to them for whatever the reason. So, obviously, I mean, I shouldn't say obviously, I've learned nothing is obvious, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite possible that whatever spirit or spirits are there are comfortable with you and, and also with Penny. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's I, I, I don't know. They, have they appeared to you a number of times or just a few times? Um, well, in my experience, in my, my stay here at the club, it's only been, I guess, that one time that I actually experienced it. Right, but what about the feeling? Because you said you were sort of reluctant to go upstairs. Well, right I am there. because we... So do you feel something? Well, we just feel scared, frightened. We don't know if there is an actual person, ghost here, um, I don't know why we relate to it upstairs because we don't go upstairs that often. Okay. And so it's kind of scary to go up there because we don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm glad you clarified that there was activity also over here because when you talked about going scared upstairs, mm -hmm. I thought it was coming from upstairs, but no activity was here too. So I thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Stan Mallow, the paranormal yakker, and now I'm going to be yakking away with Betty Ann, who is a voting member of the Toronto Humber Yacht Club, and sister to Mama, who I was just speaking with too. Yes. Welcome to the paranormal yakker. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. So you're the sister. So you're the one who heard the call first when that spirit did that. Yes. Yes, and it was directly behind us. That's it very loud and um, it was a it was a man's voice like so it was okay yes to isolate it to a man yeah uh, do you and think he wanted to make himself known to you or he just coughed there or what? I believe so I, it was that strong because um, I when I heard it I I looked right behind me and then mm -hmm. I looked at my sister and I said did you hear what I heard and she said, I 
Yeah, I think so. And then he coughed again. And I went, Okay, is, second time. Yes. Yes. And then, um, like she said, there was no one in the club at the time, just the three of us. And, and the third person was there who knew about the ghost and said that we had a, it had to be the ghost? Yes. Yes, because she, she had a smirk on her face. And then we said, what are you smiling yeah. about? And she said, darling, it's just the ghost. Just the ghost? Just the ghost. And what did you react? I said, this reaction? is pretty scary. So you were scared too, as yeah, your sister was. was? Yeah. And it was downstairs over and here it was, too? Yeah, it was like right, I'd say right where we're sitting here. That's how close it was. Now when the other person said, it's a ghost, uh, that you said you, 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 you're you afraid. Mm -hmm. um, were you reluctant to go around the place? Did you want to get out of here? Did you feel comfortable? Uh, I mean, you were scared. Obviously, something that happens, you know, it's going to take you right. back. But did you feel like you were threatened or anything like that, or no? No, I didn't okay, feel good. threatened. No. Um, just shocked, I guess. And, and it was... I was shocked because we've heard so much about this, you know, there's a ghost or a spirit in the club, and then we actually experienced it. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, did the person who said it's just a ghost, did they say who it was? No. Was your sister Norma and mentioned the one about that person who used to <coughs> be here by the bar, what happened with him in the water and stuff like uh -huh. that. Was anybody else there? Because sometimes it could be more than one spirit that people come around. No, no, it's just, it was that. Okay, now you heard the call off. Uh, did you smell anything? Were there any aromas that were different? Like, I, sometimes they showed themselves with that too, that you were aware of, or you didn't pay attention to it. No, I don't think there was anything. Oh yeah, one thing I did ask your sister, I'd like to know, uh, this occurrence, was it, Day, night, morning? It was in the evening. It was in the yes, evening. Yes, it was in the evening. It was in the evening, okay. and it was only the three of you here. Yes. Now, the other stories that you heard related to the spirit, is it usually when there's just a few people here, or has the spirit shown themselves when there was a lot of people here? No, it's just a few. Because the story that my sister told about the the lady standing in the window with the glass of wine. Mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. only the one gentleman that uh, saw that. Okay. So it was only him, and he said to his grandmother, I thought you said nobody was in the club, and she said, no, there isn't. And he says, well, there's a lady standing there with a glass of wine. So, wow. Yeah. No, I, I find all of that fascinating, because when I've been involved with the different spirits, you know, once and going to people. Sometimes most like well a lot of people are over there, sometimes uh, just a few people, just one person, sometimes scaring. Now, I have to ask this with Helen and other sisters with Norma. Do you recall when you were younger if there were any incidents where the two of you were together and something paranormal happened or something unusual that can't be explained? Or no? No. I'm just starting to look for a pattern yeah. or something like that. No. No. There was no. nothing like that on over there. Not that I can recall. No. Did you ever ask on your own when you came back afterwards to get contact with that spirit and ask if they had a message for you or anything else like that? Or no. you could care less about that. <laughs> you were too scared. I'd be too scared. No. No. But I I've been in here several nights with, you know, my sister and I, and the bartender. And I'd be scared to, to go to the washroom. And I'd be singing, la, 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 just to let the spirit, if somebody's in here, let them know that I'm, I'm here and I'm going to the washroom. That's good. Right? You know, something you may want to do, just a future reference to that, sometimes they found a lot of times there, whatever the reason, when you have a little bell and you ring it, it would take them away, so. Yeah, well, that's, I you, guess you, that's the reason why I, I've said, you know. Boys, whatever it is yeah. going in and on that there. But one time, if you ever got a, a sense that the being is around you, just say, you know, you know, leave me alone, or, you know, go away for now, you know. I appreciate you being here. 
and things like that. I assume none of you had cameras with you. No. Oh, if I were to place like this, up? chances are yes. it would be yes oh. uh, when they're around over there. If you ever see them, oh no, and have seen them, obviously hear them, we, or you send something, just take a photo. You'd be very pleasantly surprised. Oh. Or, uh, you know, you never know, or would show up, etc. Because you never, 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 never know with that. Now, to your knowledge, I know your sister told us a number of people that also had experiences with this being, spirit. Uh, do you know other people who have other types of experiences they share, that they shared with you? No. 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 Did they ever come to children or little kids or it was always adults? It was always adults. Yeah. And nobody, to your knowledge, had an experience seeing the being when they were on their boat or on the water. It was in the confines of the clubhouse. Right. Yeah. Okay, that could be quite telling. So this could be fascinating. So, uh, oh, so one of the things that's my own curiosity, you talked about being a boating member of the club. Right. That fascinated me. What's a boating member? You know, how is that different from another type of a member? Well, we have a boat, and yep. um, we have a spot in front of our boat. Mm -hmm. We have uh, social members who mm -hmm. um, just come to events, or they can come down and enjoy, you know, the scenery mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, like I just say, I feel very lucky, happy that I was able to see all the camaraderie on when I was here on Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. It seems it's not just a club where people go and boom, and this and that, look, I'm here. It seems to be true camaraderie between everybody. Yes. Over yes. here, very nice with down that, there. I think that's great. And maybe one day down the road, if you could convince some of the other people over there, maybe a mass a group to go around and do a circle or something, and maybe we could try to see if we could bring it forward. Just I'm not telling you to do that, but that's a possibility mm -hmm. because all the vibes and all the energy you're telling me over here, something may happen. Uh, so all I got to say is I thank you so much.